next we will start with the symbol tables. So, uh, symbol table is another very important uh, part symbol table construction and symbol table management in the compiler design. So, as we have discussed previously that it is not that symbol tables will become part of the final code that is produced, but it helps in the code generation process. And uh, uh, symbol table is one data structure in any compiler that will be accessed very frequently. So, if we can have a good uh, representation of the symbol table, so that this access to it is fast, then this compiler that we have, so that will also be quite fast. So, that is one objective. Another objective is that, uh, so depending upon the programming language, it can define uh, the scope of the variable. That is, if when at, uh, at in, the, in the program at some point we have defined a variable x. Now, where the, the how in what portion of the program that particular definition is visible. So, a typical example may be like say global variables versus local variables. So, global variables, so they are defined outside uh, all the functions and they are uh, available throughout the program. Whereas, if I have got a local variable x defined within a function, then it is uh, that particular definition is available only within that particular function. So, that way. Uh, this uh, symbol table design for the two cases will be different like if we if we do not uh, keep any differentiation between uh, uh, so global variables and local variables then whenever a definition comes so we have to search for the entire uh, symbol table and then uh, we have to decide like whether it is a global definition or a local definition and it, it becomes very cumbersome to uh, check properly that whether a particular variable has been defined uh, uh, properly in the program or not so, this uh, in this part of the lecture, so we will be looking into how to make that uh, symbol table organization efficient and for uh, our purpose. So, we will be doing it like this, first we will be looking into the typical information that are stored in the symbol table, then the features of the symbol table, then we will be looking into some symbol table organization policies like some simple symbol table and some scoped symbol table and finally, we will come to the conclusion. So, in it is essential uh, data structure used by compilers to remember information about identifiers in the source program. So, this is very important. So, uh, because this identifiers may be uh, types, type names, may be variables, may be uh, some function name. So, like that we can have different types of uh, identifiers in a program and it may be that in the symbol table we store all those identifiers. So, usually the lexicon analyzer and parser they fill up the entries in the table and the later phases like code generator and optimizer. So, they will make use of those symbol table information. So, this is uh, typically the situation uh, and we have seen that in lexical analysis phase itself. So, whenever this lexical analyzer comes uh, with a new uh, token if it ident if it finds that this is an identifier it installs it in the symbol table and returns the index of that symbol table as an attribute to the token ID. Uh, so, but uh, parser also needs to fill up something because the type of the symbol and all. So, uh, uh, parser will know like in which line it, it is defined. What I want to mean is uh, something like this. For example, I can have I can have a situation uh, like this. So, I, so, I have defined something like say integer x or sometimes I have defined like say integer x, y, z. Now, what happens is that upon getting this uh, keyword integer, the lexical analyzer will return that type int. Okay. Now, getting x, so it has returned the type id along with that in the symbol table it has installed the uh, variable x, identifier x but it does not, uh, but it could not know what is the type because uh, this line, the whole line is available to the parser. So, when the parser will be looking into this whole line, so it will understand that it started uh, with the uh, token int. So, as a result, its type should be integer. So, that can be filled up. Similarly, it is, uh, so y when it comes, so the lexical analyzer will put the y entry into the symbol table and the rest of the fields uh, of that uh, particular uh, row, so they, they may be filled up by the parser. So, this way this lexical analyzer and parser, so they will work together for uh, making the symbol table. And later phases like code generation and optimization, so they will be using this symbol table information because it is very important to know the type of the individual symbols to allocate proper space for them. 
so they will be uh, done in the um, uh, optimize the code generation and optimization phase types of symbols stored in the symbol table that will include uh, variables procedures functions defined constants labels structures etc so all these can go be stored in the symbol table so uh, variables we understand that okay they must be in the symbol table so procedures are also needed because uh, many a times uh, if i have got a call to a procedure so i have to uh, see whether it is proper or not typical uh, situation may be like this in many programming languages what happens is that uh, if i have got say say x equal to y 10 okay so this y it may be an array or it may be a function so both are possible so if it is an array then this y 10 means i am uh, referring to the uh, uh, 10th entry of the array a y so this uh, uh, this uh, in it is 10 acts as an index of the array element on the other hand when it is a function so i am passing this 10 as an as a parameter to the uh, function and then uh, this is uh, this is a function call now how will you understand like whether y is array or function so for that purpose we need to refer to the symbol table so looking into the symbol table we understand that either type of y is a is an array or type of y is a function so <coughs> this uh, procedures function so they are also put into the symbol table so that we can easily search them out some defined constants like we can have uh, apart from these variables i can have something like constant x 10 so that way these constants are to be defined so they are to be, they are stored in the symbol table. some in sometimes in the programs we have got this labels so these labels are also stored then structures are also stored because structures may have some fields in them like i can have a structure uh, this way that structure abc and it has got fields like say int x1 character y1 so like that i can have a number of fields now this abc is the name of the structure so that also needs to be stored in the symbol table and then it has got fields like this x1 y1 so this x1 y1 they are also going to be stored in the symbol table with a, a proper attributes identifying that they are the fields of the structure abc so this has to be done so this way there are many the things that we have so we can store them in the symbol table and symbol tables may vary widely from implementation to implementation even for the same language so symbol table the language designer will tell nothing about the symbol table so language designer will tell about the scope of the variables and this uh, syntax of the, of the language and all so it is up to the compiler designer to figure out like what can be a uh, good symbol table organization for the language so that is to be done now what are the information that we are going that are we going to store in the symbol table so these are the typical information that are stored the name so it may be the name of the identifier or may be stored directly or as a pointer to another character string in an associated string table so um, like if it is uh, say if i say that i am storing the name of the symbol then the symbol table structure there is a field called name now what is the type of this field so this field has to be some character array but how big so if i say that it is character name 100 in that case i am giving 100 characters here now this may be too large or it may be too small because if the program that we are compiling if the names the uh, names of the identifiers that are coming are only say two three characters long then uh, keeping 100 entries for each of them is a wastage of space at the same time uh, if the uh, if the uh, if i put here the value 10 uh, in, in instead of 100 so if i make the value say 10 that will put a constraint that this uh, identifiers can have at most 10 characters so if you look into the programming language it will tell you like how long how um, how long can be these individual names so if these uh, names are uh, uh, if these names are can, may, can be arbitrarily long then what we need to do is that we need to store somehow these names uh, at some other place so in those cases what is done we have got a separate string table 
So, this is a string table where it is storing all the strings and this string is not uh, size limited because these uh, the, the individual entries are characters like A, B, C, D and whenever the string ends may be we have got the null character there. So, that way this so individual uh, individual entries so they are the characters and the last character is the null character of the string. Now, so this index of this uh, um, string table may be stored as the name of the symbol. So, that way we can do it. So, then we can handle arbitrarily long um, names. Okay. So, they, they, they are they can be stored as pointer to the string table. Then the type of the symbol. So, type of the identifier like variable, label, procedure name, etcetera. So, what is the type that can be stored? And for variables, we also need to store the basic types, whether it is a basic type or, or it is derived type, etcetera. So, it is a uh, basic type like integer, real, float, etcetera, or some derived types. So, that has to be stored in the type field. Then, location. So, offset within the program where the identifier is defined. So, uh, at what distance, uh, what, uh, what offset that particular identifier is defined, that location has to be stored. Then, the scope. So, this scope is telling us like the region of the program where the current definition is valid. So, how long uh, in which portion of the program the definition is valid. So, that will give us the scope and there may be other attributes like array limits, fields of records, parameters, return values, etcetera. So, they also need to be stored and they can be stored in the uh, symbol table. So, all these in like uh, it, this is just a suggestion like these are the typical entries that we have in the symbol table. Now, a particular com design compiler designer may think about some other attributes or maybe think that okay, some of these attributes are redundant, so we do not need those attributes. So, it also depends on the language for which you are uh, doing this, this uh, symbol table. So, uh, so, language may or may not support some of the features like uh, say a language that does not support say record. So, in that case, uh, so there is no point in storing the having the capacity of storing records in the symbol table. So, that way this uh, symbol table design is de depicted uh, by this uh, uh, is depicted by the programming language and also uh, it is uh, a choice of the compiler designer. Now, where are you going to use this symbol table? So, we have seen that those are the information to be stored and we have also seen that symbol table is generated by the uh, lexicon analyzer and the parser tool. Now, where are, where are you going to use this? So, one point is the semantic analysis, particularly the type check. So, whether the, uh, we have to, we are go, when, you, when you are going to check types of some expression, say, uh, say uh, some assignment statements or some um, uh, or some say operation like x plus y, we are going to check that uh, we need to know the types of x and y. So, for that we need to refer to the symbol table to get the types of the identifiers. Then there are code generation. So, we uh, for the variables that we have in the program. So, during code generation we have to pro have proper spaces given. For example, if we have a program uh, in which we have got say integer x character y the variables like that then. So, in the program the code that is generated. So, if this is the um, say that object code. So, in the object code I must have the space is allocated to x. So, this x is say 4 bytes. So, first 4 bytes of space they are reserved for x. Then the character is 1 byte. So, this is for y. So, this way it goes. So, this individual uh, bytes. So, they are storing they are stored there and uh, this uh, space is allocated to the individual variables. So, uh, this is to be done by at the code generation phase. So, type of the variables they can tell us how much space we reserve for the for those identifiers. Then the error detection like there are undefined variables. So, how do you know like if uh, if, and, uh, if your identifier is coming and then uh, it can see that okay, okay that identifier is um, uh, undefined. Okay. So, that particular variable is undefined. So, this parser or the lexicon analyzer can detect that situation that the, this is an undefined variable. Another important point is that uh, suppose in my program I have uh, uh, it so in my program I have used the variable x several times. So, here I am writing x equal to something after some place uh, in some expression I am writing x here. So, like that suppose I am using x several times, but forgot to define x. 
the statement like say i n t x these I have forgotten to write. Then what will happen at every place? So, this compiler, so this will give an error undefined x, undefined x like that and that is a bit um, um, cumbersome and um, um, irritating because the programmer will tell uh, why are you, why this compiler is giving me this message several times. I know that x is undefined. So, why is it giving the same error message again and again? So, one way out for that is that when at this first place when it finds that x is undefined. So, it can uh, find this particular uh, uh, it, it knows that x is undefined. So, in that case it can install this x into the symbol table. So, it can install this x into the symbol table with its type as undefined and then it can uh, uh, then uh, the what will happen successive places. So, this x when it comes. So, it will know that x is there in the symbol table and then it will not define generate this error that x is undefined. So, it is in some sense fooling the compiler itself uh, so that it later points. So, it does not repeat the similar error messages. So, this type of error detection for undefined uh, uh, for undefined variables when uh, so this it is occurring. So, it can be installed. So, the recurrence of error message can be avoided. Then for the optimization purpose. So, what happens is that in the code generation process so apart from the program variables that we have as defined by the user, they, then there are several temporary variables that are defined that, that are generated. So, particularly if you have got an expression which is uh, quite long like say I have got an expression like x equal to y plus z into w. So, what happens is that so it is converted into set of simple instructions like t 1 equal to z into w then t 2 equal to y plus uh, t 1 and then x equal to t 2. So, it is converted into these three statements. So, this uh, t 1, t 2, so these are the new variables or temporaries that are generated which were not there in the original program. But you need to uh, store, you need to um, store this t 1 and t 2 and give them some space also. In normal procedure what will happen like as you are defining the space for x and y. So, you also have to define space for t 1 and the space for t 2. Now, if you do that, so if you are giving separate separate space for all these temporaries. So, this three one line code you see there are two temporary variables generated. So, if you have got thousands of lines of code then many many temporaries will get generated. So, whenever there is some uh, um, uh, some expression, so it will generate a set of temporaries. Now, all these temporaries they need not be given space simultaneously. So, it, uh, they are they, they may be uh, uh, they may not be given separate spaces. Okay. So, maybe this t 1 and t 2 sometime later in the some other function. So, we will be again using some uh, um, uh, other temporaries. So, such that those temporaries do not coincide with this uh, t 1 and t 2. So, they are not required simultaneously. So, the same space t 1, t 2 can be given to the temporaries t 3 and t 4 also. Okay. Now, while doing this merging we have to know that these types of t 1 and t 3 are same. So, that the same amount of space can be allocated for them they can share the same amount of space. Similarly, this t 2 and t 4 they are also um, of same type. So, that they will share the same amount of space. So, this way we can have this uh, optimization phase. So, it will try to merge two or more temporaries and this merging uh, can be done only if they are of same type. Okay. Next important thing that we have are the operations on symbol table. So, what are the operations that we are going to do on a symbol table? The most frequent operation is the lookup operation. So, very frequently we need to check whether an identifier is there in the symbol table. Many times we need to get the types and offsets of those symbols. So, so identifiers. So, like that. So, this lookup is the most frequent operation. Then insert is the second important operation because this is addition of new names into the table and happens mostly in the lexical and syntax analysis phases. So, this lookup is the most frequent operation, insert is the next uh, frequent operation. Then we have got modification, sometimes a name is modified and this uh, definite all the defini all information may not be available and then we need to update it later. As I was telling that this lexicon analyzer it might have put the name of the variable into the symbol table, 
but not the other information the type offset etc. So, they may be calculated by the, this parser and accordingly the values may be put there. So, this modification when it is being done uh, by, by into the symbol table, so that will require the modify operation and a delete operation. So, delete operation is we want to delete the identifier from the symbol table. So, delete is not very frequent, so this will occur uh, particularly when a procedure ends. So, uh, so maybe I have a procedure and in this procedure P, in this procedure P, so we have defined some variables like x, y, etc. Then when this procedure ends, after that this x and y, they do not have any meaning. So for the outside this procedure, this x and y, they are not visible. So, we need to delete them from the symbol table to make the symbol table uh, entries uh, released. So, they can be used for some uh, storing some other variables. So, this way we can have this delete operation. So, this lookup, insert, modify and delete. So, these are the four basic operations that we have in the symbol table and out of that this lookup is the most frequent operation. Then the next one is this insert and this modify and delete. So, they are uh, then this this modify. So if I put uh, say four stars there, telling that they are very important. Then insert is two star, modify is one star, and this is uh, normal operation delete. So, so so that this delete is very very in uh, very very infrequent. So they are only when a block ends, then only this delete is done, and this this is often not very costly also because we can uh, we can just release that uh, space which is held by the symbol table for that portion of the definition. So, these are the operations on the symbol tables. Now, while uh, handling this, so, uh, so we have to next we are looking towards having some data structure which can be used for uh, organizing this symbol table and then we can have uh, there are several um, options there like when you are talking about the symbol table structure and we have to be concerned about the uh, the, the operations that we are going to do. So, based on that we can have uh, the symbol table organized. So, what are the issues? The first issue is the format of entries. So, so there can be uh, different types of uh, formats for the symbol table. It can be a simple linear array or it can be a tree structure table. So, there can be different types of organizations okay, of this symbol table. Then how are you going to access the table? may be a linear search, may be a binary search, tree search, hashing, etc. So, there can be different access methodology based on which this uh, symbol table will be used. Now, for example, if you are using a binary search and you have organized your symbol table as a list, then of course, it is difficult to search for the entries. On the other hand, if it is uh, organized as a um, uh, table and you are storing the indices one after the, if you are storing the symbols one after the other, then hashing is not a good strategy there. For hashing, we need to store the entries at some particular places only in the table. So, this way this access methodology, so it will also tell you like how much is the, uh, uh, will be how much will be the cost of individual operations into the uh, symbol table. Then the location of the storage, it may be primary memory or it may be uh, partially partial storage in the secondary memory. So, typically the symbol table should be stored in the primary memory because uh, whenever we are trying to access it, so it should be immediately available or it may be that we are, we are just uh, talking about uh, some partials to uh, a part of the symbol table being stored in the secondary storage. So, that we can uh, just, uh, so the symbol table is very large, so it cannot be accommodated in the uh, primary storage. So, we will do, we'll do put a part of it in the secondary storage. Then there are scope rules like in block structured language, a variable defined in upper blocks must be visible to inner blocks and not the other way. So, what we mean is that uh, for example, if we have got a C type of language, now, if there is a um, block like this where you have defined say integer x and y and within this there is another block where we have got the integers a and b. So, here so in this region 
So, you should be able to see uh, both a b and x y because this x y is defined in the outside block and this x y uh, uh, will should be visible to the block that it that it is encapsulating. So, this x y are visible here however, this a b so they are defined here and they should not be visible at this point. So, the if, if there is a reference to a b at this point, so either it is defined in again some higher level block or global variables or otherwise, so this is an uh, this is a, this is an error okay, this is not available here. So, this this is known as the scope rule. So, scope rule says that how much what is the scope of a particular definition in a program. So, how much of the program can see a particular definition. So, they are uh, uh, so the, some variables that are defined in some block should be visible to the inner blocks, but not the other way. Okay. So, that is uh, these are the issues with the symbol table. So, we will see how these are uh, done in uh, different symbol table organization, how they are organized. So, the simple type of symbol table. So, they will work for uh, with languages with a single scope. So, single scope means so everything is visible everywhere. Okay. So, it is typically uh, the language where wherever you define a variable, so they will be visible to the entire program. So, there is as you say in some sense you can say that the all variables are global in this way. So, at any point of time in your uh, in your program you define some variable, so a, b, c like that. So, it does not matter. So, wherever you define, so this will be visible here this a b c will be visible here, then x y will also be visible there. So, it is not dependent on the position of the program at which those variables are defined. So, they should be visible everywhere. And for this type of languages, the common structures that we have is the linear table that is a very simple structure, so a simple array type of structure. Then we have got ordered list where we can have something like uh, say uh, a part of the, the list is ordered in some fashion may be the of the symbols that are occurring first. So, they will be keep, uh, kept earlier. Then we have got tree type of structure where this tree list is organized as a tree and there can be hash table. So, in hash table the, uh, the elements are not put as they are coming. So, in this linear table what will happen is that these uh, variables as they are getting defined. So, x, y, then a, b c so they will be stored one after the other so in ordered list so there will be some ordering so how that ordering will come so it will be dependent on the language so it may be that we have got uh, in a list structure x then y then a then b then c so like that so we have got an ordered list or it, it can be a tree type of structure so, how this tree will be organized, so it may be a binary tree or something like that, so it will be that way. And hash table means that this x, y, a, b, c for each of them we will compute it index based on some function and then those symbols will be stored at the corresponding place only. So, this way different uh, types of organizations of this simple symbol table can be taken up and then when we are going to complex symbol table, so basically the scope rules they will define this uh, complexity of the structure and accordingly they will be organized, but following these basic principles only using this uh, basic uh, symbol table organization policy only.